This podcast is brought to you by the Deluxe Edition Network. To find more great shows on our network, head over to the den.show. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Don't quote me on that. And then you could stop talking about it. <laughs> no, I could. Let me see one of those so I can see how it fits in my, in my big old paw. Till next time, go take on the world. What is going on and welcome to Take On The Word. This is Johnny. And Mike D. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we got another knife review for you. <clears throat> and uh, we got, I would say we have a plethora of knives. We have, a, yes. Uh, some we've dealt with before. I don't have one. Oh, and on. Go ahead. Keep talking. Some we have not. <clears throat> uh, this is the Holtafor Craftsman Knife. Holtafors. Holtafors. You little wiener. Okay. Just lay or, down. Or lay down, you little one. Yeah. All right. So, this. <sighs> so, for, for those who might be confused, if you've seen our other knife reviews, this looks very similar to the Mora. To the Mora. Yeah. Um, like, if you would have handed that to me, I would have thought that's what it was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, we're probably going to beat this thing to death again because I'm sure there's a. I, no, no, I know there's a million. More knife reviews out there, and I highly would suggest one because they're awesome. They're they're cheap, and if you break one, pff, you have twenty more left in your bag. But you don't like the sheath. Oh, uh, I don't like the sheaths on any of these really. But I'll show you a mod that I have done, and I think we touched on this the last time, and uh, that really makes them a lot better for what they are. So, anyways, without further ado, here's the Hulte Force Craftsman. I don't know. Should I go over all the features? Who gives a fuck? It's a it's a fucking work knife. Like, it, you take this to the work site. You, well, it's carbon steel. That People usually yeah. want to know that. Okay, carbon steel. You can see I put a mustard patina on there. That one actually turned out really well. I think I just got um a Q-tip and dab, 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 let it do its thing, wipe it off, clean it, and do it again. I did it like three times. However, the thing I like about the Hultafors is the tang. The tang goes to about here? It's like three three quarters. So it's a lot longer than the Mora. It's Morris. a lot longer than the Mora. Now, I watched a video years ago. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I tried, and you cannot get these in the States anymore. They don't sell them to the States. I tried like hell to get them on any kind of website, and you just can't buy them, which is awkward because they're awesome. So anyways, I saw a review of this knife. It was actually, this is the carbon steel, and I also have the stainless steel. Hold the force. Same exact blade profile. Handle profile. Do, 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 do. Except for the blue is stainless. Orange carbon. So this guy took a carbon Hold the force. Sideways like this. Freaking hammered it into a tree. All the way up to the to the plastic, and he stood on it, and it was jumping up and down like that, trying to break the freaking knife off. He pulls it out, and it is, I want to say it was damn near straight as an arrow. It might have had a slight bend to it, but that's what had me sold. I was like, holy shit, I got to get one of these. Like, And he wasn't like, you know... He wasn't a smaller guy, but he was, you could see the thing like, you know, going like this as he's jumping up and down on it and then smacks it out of the tree. And that's when I had to have one. So, uh, as far as me beating this thing, I haven't, I've just had it and I actually lost this. And then I was going through my stuff and I found a bag from like, oh my God. Holy shit, I thought I lost all these. So 
I have the Halt the Force uh, Craftsman. The Halt the Force Craftsman and Stainless. And which, by the way, these all have Scandi Grind. Oh, I'm sorry. They have a Scandi Grind with a secondary bevel. So, um... For for use of those for those of you that don't know, Scandi grind is one bevel on each side, very easy to sharpen. You lay it on a stone, the same angle, lightly go back and forth. The secondary bevel, you lay it on the stone, lift up a little bit, and sharpen it. Now the secondary bevel gives it it's a little bit stronger edge, um, and it's less. Um, it did you find them on Amazon? Wow. Okay, they must have started selling them again. So it's uh sixteen to thirty dollars. Okay. Well, okay, I stand corrected. You can't get these again. Look at that little jabby jabby. Yeah. Um they also make a plumber's knife, which I wanted to get. So it has a file on the back here. So you can file down your copper pipe as you like ream it out and everything. Um They make chisels and all kinds of shit. There's an auto punch. Um, what the hell was I talking about here? So, oh, I was talking about the, the, the Scandi grind and a Scandi grind with a secondary bevel. So I like to put a secondary bevel on them. I think it's a little bit stronger and it's less susceptible to chipping and wearing down. And when done right, you can, um, you can easily get it razor sharp again. Now these do not come with a 90 degree spine. So I had to file down a 90 degree spine on them, which is no big deal. It's super easy. And anybody's anybody you can go out to the store, Home Depot, Lowe's, buy a file set or buy a file for like a couple bucks and just sit here and just go, shh, shh, just nice and slow. Take it easy. You know, you got all the time in the world and it might take you about 20 minutes, but you'll get a 90 degree edge and you can, you can spark a ferro rod, fire steel. And this is a stainless one. Did the same thing. 90 degree spine. And guess what? Guess what you can do with this? What can you do with that? Guess what you can do, Mike? Can you strike a fire on? Yahtzee! Okay, so here. Since I'm a knife hog, here. At least they fit your hand pretty well. I got big, chunky, BB fucking hands. No, I like these. Yeah. They're just like the Morris. Yeah, they're just like the Morris. I think they're I, a little stronger. I think the handle might be a little bit thinner. Yeah. Um, Come get me, man. It reminds me of like a, a knife that you would encounter on like a, a, a fishing boat. Yeah. Like a guy's just like gutting bait all day long with this thing. <clears throat> but like I said, the only thing that I don't like about this type of knife is if you have to get up close to something like to, to sharpen it here, you really you can't get that like last little bit because of the handle here. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's what I had the problem with mine in yeah. in the the work sharp. Yeah. Yeah. Like so, you have a a, a, a sanding thing, and, and you can, but you're going to take off half of your fucking handle. So I mean, whatever. So. Um. But for fifteen bucks. Hey, fifteen bucks is fifteen bucks. I I highly. When I took that orange one, I think I took that to Colorado and I passed out cut. I'm pretty sure I took this one. Does has that the. This is the sheath that it comes in. And for whatever these fucking Swedes, or wherever this is made, I know more of Sweden, they have this button system. Yeah, it, it, so it shows it. It's like their pants have buttons it's on them. It's called a work trouser holster lock. Yeah, so your work pants, which are prov- probably provided by you by the government, <laughs> They have a button on them that will fit into this hole, and you just kind of like lock them onto your your suspenders, your belt, your fucking leg. I don't know what the fuck they do over there, but <coughs> oh, excuse me. This podcast is brought to you by Bear Claw Kitchen. Head on over to BearClawKitchen.com and check out their amazing selection of granola bars and granola snack packs. They also have hazel and spice granola butter, maple syrup, pancake mix, and a few different flavors of jam. So, once again, 
Head over to BearClawKitchen.com and use code DELUXE15 at checkout to save 15% off your entire order. And then it's time to devour and claw on. Um, so what I did, I think there's a, yes, there's a flap that comes on. Here it is. Here's an untouched Haltafor sheath. So it has this uh, little flap on it. Oh, my God. Let me see if we can fucking open this thing. And I guess that's how it's supposed to. You put this over your button and then fold this over top so it doesn't come undone. And I don't have any of that shit. So I cut that flap off and I tie a rope around it. And now, guess what? It's a nice little neck knife, yeah. So I dangle from your neck. And you go pokey pokey. <laughs> when you walk around. See? Just don't let your big tits get in the way. You do the hokey pokey. You turn yourself around. That's uh, what it's all about, bro. So I That's how I carried all these knives when I went hunting. I would carry it like this, and I have a jacket on over top of it, buttoned up, and I would undo the middle button, and I would just kind of stick it right in there, so it's it's always it's always hanging down right there. So we went to Colorado this time. I took <clears throat> my Mora, and it was in my emergency kit with my Fire Strike. And was that a Mora I gave you? Yes, it was. Did it have a ninety degree spine? Yes, it did. Carbon or stainless? Carbon. Okay. I didn't rate stainless. Okay. I got nothing against the stainless, but typically outdoors guys like carbon. It's got a better reputation. Stay sharper longer. The only thing is you got to worry about rust. So it, you can kind of see in this picture here, I have a dangling off me neck. Um, dangling the, off me neck. You see this little indentation here, which you do not see on the untouched Heltefoss. Okay, so what I have found with Moras and Hulta Force, um, this one actually did pretty well. You get a little heat gun, right? Heat this back part up. Put put the knife in there, and press down on it. Where we go here? And press down on that. I forget what I did with it. I I think I took like a, I can kind of see numbers in there. Like I took a, a bolt head, or a rod or something, and just pressed down on it. Because if you do it with your fingers, you're gonna burn the shit out of your fingers. And then this plastic doesn't really melt easy, in the fact that or in the way that it's easy to make it look clean. <clears throat> and I'll go to my next one. And I'll show you, it was the first one I did, and I messed it up, but it still works. <laughs> I can see it from here. Yeah. But instead of the knife, just you could go like this, same with the Mora, and it falls out of the sheath. Um, you know, not something you want to have with your work knife, especially if you're hunting with it or if you were using a survival knife. So when you do this, it ain't coming out of there. And it, you can hear the, you hear the pop when it goes back in. So that, hands down, makes this sheath way better. And this plastic's pretty tough. I mean, I don't, I don't see this breaking so off. So it's not Kydex? Uh, I wouldn't say. No, I think Kydex is harder. It's just PVC. Uh, yes. Um, we'll go to... Go to the one you fucked up. Here's the one. Now, this is the, this is the beefier Holta Force. This is um what's this one like? I'd have to look. You see how fucking ugly that is? Try and get close. So first I, I tried experimenting. I tried melt that the, that's not the outdoor, is it? Uh yeah, I think it's the outdoorsman. Is there uh something on is it No, that's that's a um that's a mora. Right? No. That's a halter for. 
I think this was the outdoorsman before they changed it to that one. Or I'm sorry, no, that's the heavy duty. This one right here. Yeah, this is the Halt of Force heavy duty. So I did the same thing. I cut that flap off. I put a neck loop on it, paracord. <laughs> and even experimentation, I tried heating this up, pushing that in. That didn't work. And then I was like, oh, let me try this. So I heated that up and pushed that in, and that did work. Now, it's got all this gunk over there. I just wrapped duct tape around it, black gorilla uh, tape, so it looked a little nicer. Um, oh. That, again, is a carbon steel. That is a hot apple cider vinegar wash. So that's about two, two, three passes in hot apple cider vinegar. And let me tell you. This one I carried in Colorado for two years on my elk hunt. 90 degree spine on it. I loved it, dude. I, I cut up all kinds of crap with it. I tried to start a fire with the uh, the ferro rod and the steel, and I, I suck at it. I would have died in the wilderness head and I had a lighter. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. I grabbed this shit, what I thought was like old man's beard, and it... <laughs> It was old man's wet ass beard, <laughs> and it didn't light on fire for shit. But um, yeah, you see right off the bat, you this... grabbed old man's juicy ass hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, old man's fart stained hairs. Clicks in there, not coming out. Freaking great, but the heavy duty is. A little bit different than the regular. You can see right off the bat the thickness of the blade. And the thickness of the handle. And the thickness of the handle. That's more like the more. Um, damn it, I'm not really at a good angle. It's got a bigger handle. Bigger blade. Um, I think it feels more comfortable, but (laughs) there's only so many things you can do with a thick ass blade like this. You know, you can't do, you can't do some of the finer details you can with, with this. You do stabby, stabby, pokey, pokey. You can do stabby, stabby, pokey, pokey with this for sure. And I believe this one has the three quarter tang as well. So, um, I had... Like five of these at one point, and I gave them out to like all kinds of different people. Uh, in fact, I have a brand new one here, which I have not altered the sheath. That's the original. The only thing, only thing it does not have the sticker, if it even came with the sticker. But you see how easy it is to get out of the sheath without any alt, uh, modifications. Just kind of slides out. I didn't even give that a ninety degree spine. It's kind of rolled over. I guess they're stamped out. But again, that's carbon steel, just not rusting. Uh, then we can kind of... Am I, am I hitting on out of the notes here, man? I'm yeah, like, you got it. You, you're on okay. it. Uh, and then we got, of course, some of my favorites. Zimora. And like I said, here's these Swedes with their, they love their interlocking. How does it work? You flip it upside down and cut your fucking hand off. Slide it down. So now. Well, uh, Haltafor actually sells a double sheath. What do you mean a double sheath? It has a sheath, and then there's one attached to it. Oh, like a blank? For like a utility knife. Huh. I think it was on Amazon. Yeah, I don't know. That whole thing's just foreign to me. Like, I could just see me showing up to work. Okay, so it's got like a a razor blade. Utility knife. Yeah. So you would... Dangle this off your fifth knife, and then you have like eight <laughs> knives hanging down. What knife shall I stab so, you with today? So you can see, folks can see here. Turn it. There's a tab here you pull up on. Just pull the knife out before you cut yourself. 
It's not a bad idea. There we go. Did we get that on camera? Yeah. Not that it really gives them. So that's a stainless, stainless Mara. That's a carbon steel Mara. And I'll have to link the Mara. Uh, at the and, end of this video, oh we'll link God. the Mara. This thing's starting to rust. Even though it's got a patina on it, it's starting to rust. So, no big deal. Hit a little bit, a little bit of oil. All I usually take olive oil with my my camp knives and stuff. I don't like motor oil on my knives. Why not? Or I'll take canola oil. Uh, if I want, I'll go Asian. I put some sesame oil on it. Put a little bit of that on it. Sesame oil is too freaking expensive. <clears throat> you got Facebook? <laughs> you got Facebook? Um, so yeah, like I said, I believe the, if we could get a picture of the, uh, an, an x-ray of the tang of the Mora. I, 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 we, I had a hard time finding it. it. Did you? Yeah. So the, uh, the Mora's tang is fatter, I think, but it only comes to about halfway. But I've seen tests on these Mora's where they beat the piss out of them too. And, um, I think once they embed it in that plastic, that it's pretty much yeah, for a fifteen dollar knife. And then here's a really old knife of mine. Yeah, uh, it's a Mora Companion, and I made I made that sheath for it. Uh, it's not bad. The Kydex kind of got overheated, bubbled up a little bit there, but I think that's a yeah, it's a stainless Mora Companion. But man, what that feels great in his hand, in my hand, and of course, bingo, nice and tight. That's what you want to hear. Did you feel the? Uh, I think this would be perfect for your big old. That comes out so easy. I know. Yeah, I like that one. I'd have a good time stabby stabby with that one. Stabby stabby pokey pokey. But it needs to be. Put it under my heat lamp and pinch a little bit. Yeah. Well, that's a good modification, though. I I have never seen. So I hope this gets out to people who have a Mora type knife. Now the companion sheath, or if someone stays away from the Mora type knife because of that. Yeah. But um, the the companion type sheath, not this one, the one that comes with it originally. I. I. I haven't tried it yet, but the way it's designed, it looks like it that pinch. Technique wouldn't work um, because some of the more knives, they have like these little ridges inside. I don't know if you can see it. It's like a little raised bit right here. And that groove fits in this little or that, that raised bit fits in that groove there. So these work well, too. You just pin, you don't need doesn't mean oh. don't need much. You don't need much. Just heat it up till it's pliable and just kind of squish it down and let it cool. And um I like that little more jobby there. Yeah, I don't know. What the fuck would you use that for? Stabby, stabby. Like, that's got to be smaller than this thing. I think it's about the same size. So, what we went over, sheath modifications, Hultifors. And Mora. <laughs> I don't know they, they look identical. Yeah, they do. I don't know. I wish we could get an overhead shot of that. That'd be kind of, maybe take, we'll take a picture of it, I guess. I'll leave it lay there and I'll take a picture when we're done. All right. But hands down, I would pick any of these knives. Um, I would just do the sheath modifications on them and and the spine modification. The yeah, put a 90 degree spine on it, and uh, I think you've got a rock solid survival knife, hunting knife. You know, get me out of danger knife. Uh, stab a serial killer in the neck knife. Just saying. So the halt of four. Halt of force. Cra craftsman. Halt halt of force. Craftsman knife 
and I'm going to link the Mora below. Hold the four is heavy duty. The Mora 110 and the Mora Companion. Oh, I'm sorry, the Mora 1, one you're missing your one digit. I don't know what the fuck that's called. Mora 115. Mora Basic. 546. Yeah, I was way off. Uh, wait, that one's... Uh, anyways, go ahead, Mike. Sorry. So, uh, inexpensive, solid knives. Um, we took them on. You go take on the world. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Don't quote me on that. And then you couldn't stop talking about it. <laughs> no, I could. Let me see one of those so I can see how it fits in my, yeah. in my big old paw. Till next time, go take on the world. Our podcasts exist because of listeners like you. To find other great shows, head over to the den.show. Thanks for listening.